Good morning. Hi, Luis. Welcome to join us on Facebook for our worship service for the first Armenian Church in Belmont. I will start reading a few verses from Psalm 24, both in Armenian and in English, as the call for worship. Derot shnei yegiren u'anod yinitinam. Ashkar u'anod u'nagitimera. Pasen zi ink anod yinera, so derun vara tiket. Uzaniga ke derun vara paskabit. Ol bidi yelde derot yinera. Dam ol bidi gena anod surtera. Tevkerov surta, kusurlov matura. Vor surutyan asnadur tera. Unenkunkyan piyertun tera. Aniga derochmen ortukyum bidistana, uir kurdutyana ortukmen artarukyum. Now the same verses I will be reading in English. Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he, won, for he founded it on the sea and established it on the waters. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart. Who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false star? They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God their Savior. Let us pray. Dear Lord, this whole world is in your hands including everything that is in it. Help us keep that in our minds and act or react accordingly. This morning as we worship and celebrate the triumphant entry of your son, Jesus Christ, into Jerusalem, may we also welcome him into our hearts. In your name we pray. Amen. Grace and peace to you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, whose jubilant entry to Jerusalem we celebrate on this Palm Sunday. And this is an unusual service, for due to restrictions on gathering, we are unable to gather in our beautiful sanctuary. But thank God for the advances in technology. We are together online. And even more, we are together with our common connection to the Lord. But still, I am sure we miss to see each other in person. I miss you all, and I pray that you are doing well, and specifically that you are not sick or overwhelmed with this pandemic. If you feel anxious, do not hesitate to call me or to call each other. We are together in this, and we will pray and support each other. Thank God I am doing well, and the family is doing well too. My wife Sosi is working in the hospital to provide the health care that she has been called to do. Please pray for her as we pray also for all nurses, doctors, health care providers, and many others who are on the fourth line continuing to sacrifice themselves for our well-being. Let us also remember in particular few people that have requested prayers. The Norian family for the passing away of their mother, grandmother, Mrs. Helen Norian, she passed away on March 28th. A service, a memorial service will be held uh, when everything is calmed down. Let us also pray for Sheldon Ananyan, who was recently hospitalized with symptoms of the virus. Let us also pray for our children. Perhaps they do not really understand what is going on throughout this world. This is something new for them. Pray also for our elderly, who are most vulnerable. And also pray for those who are out of work and facing financial difficulties. And finally, let us pray for the leadership of this country, 
May this be a wake-up call from the Lord and Creator. Let us not fear, for fear will drain us and make us even more vulnerable to evil. Instead, let us use the Word of God to boost our both physical and spiritual immune system. And if there are any other thoughts or prayer requests, please, this is the time to bring it forward. And together, let us bring it to God as we pray, as we celebrate, and as we worship it. Let us bow our heads for prayer. At times like this, Lord, we feel terrible, for we see things are falling apart. Yes, when we look at the sky and the fields, we also remember you telling us to look at the birds in the air and the lilies in the fields. And you say, haven't I cared for them? Likewise, even more, the Lord says, I will care for you. So, Father, have mercy on us and continue to pour your abundant blessings on us. Whether it is in the form of healing that the sick will need, or hope and calm to those who are anxious, resources to those who are in need, and wisdom and guidance to the leadership around the world. Lord God, we pray and ask for your forgiveness. For not a short time ago, we were relying on our successes and achievements. We were so comfortable and so busy that hardly we were dedicating an hour for worship. Even so, Lord, you were still with us. You were caring for us. And now that we face a great challenge, we ask that you show your mercy on us once again. And you lift us up, both physically and spiritually. Help us understand that what we build ourselves will fall apart, but what we build in us will stand forever. We pray this morning, Lord, for those who are sick and are hospitalized. We remember Sheldon Ananyan in particular and ask that you bless him with healing. We pray for those who have lost loved ones. And specifically, we remember the Norian family for the loss of their mother, grandmother, head and Norian. We ask for your comfort. We pray for our children and the elderly, asking that you continue to protect them. Protect us, Lord, and give us strength to care for each other and care for our children and the elderly. We pray for all the medical professionals and other servicemen and women who put their lives for the sake of saving us from this pandemic. We pray for the people in leadership, asking that you guide them both mentally and spiritually. And finally, dear God, we pray and we thank you for your son, who gave his life to save us to eternity. His triumphant entry we celebrate on this fun Sunday as we sing Hosanna, Blessed is the King that comes in the name of the Lord. In your holy name we pray. Amen. And since we are not in our church sanctuary and we miss both uh, our choir di director, Levon of Sethi and the choir members with their beautiful music, but instead I would try to put one song of Palm Sunday uh, on my cell phone and we can join together singing Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is the thing that comes in the name of the Lord. Hope you will hear it. Little <laughs> 
Sunday as we sing Hosanna and we welcome Christ not into Jerusalem but also in our hearts. I have a short message prepared uh, for you on Palm Sunday and uh, scripture reading uh, on which this sermon is based are two, one from the New Testament uh, from Luke chapter 19 verses 28 to 38 and then Isaiah chapter 43, verses 5 to 13. I would like to start reading the passage from Luke. Uh, I will be reading in Armenian, but please, if you have your Bibles in your hands, turn to Luke chapter 19, and let us together hear the word of God. <laughs> Kısanine Artsa geçek zaniga uferek. Ete mega çesi hartsine te inçu garsa gek esek anor deroçe bete. Katsin anonk vor gergebetan inçpes irenç sazer kedan. Yer avanager garsa geyin anor derer sin anonk inçu garsa gek ay avanager. Anon galsin deroçe bete. Zaniga hisusi ferin u irenç hantesnere Avanagin Brat Sekelo, Hisusi, Hisus Ahet Kutsin. Yer Kertar, Irenz Hantetsner, Jampun Braga Kurelin. Yer Aveli Modetsav, Yer Kitenyats Lera, Dari Varen Gichner, Ashaget Nerun Pulot, Pazmutin, Estesav, Urakutyam, Astvato, Nel, U Parcek Sainov, Anu Ain Pulot, Rashtevun Hamar, Voron Kesereli, U Gesein, Ostiave, Takavora. Borderoche Anunova Buka. Yergeti Mech Haution, Uk Park, Parsutian Mech. Amen. Deroche Oskene Asiga, Yevdero Ne, Ira Sposka, Ne, Polorinoma. This was a passage from Luke chapter 19, and it is the particular passage for Palm Sunday. The topic of my short message today is a call for us to give God the glory he deserves. It was about 2,000 years ago when Jesus came to Jerusalem. And when he came, Israel was not at the peak of its glory. On the contrary, it was under the repressive rule of the Roman Empire and under the dominating reign of an ungodly king, Herod Antipas. Now, God purposely chose this period of oppression 
when Israel was expecting its liberation. And God had previously given them his assurance for their salvation. Through the prophet Zechariah, for example, God had even described the events of Palm Sunday, saying, See, your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey. A detailed description of what will later happen on Palm Sunday. The moment, therefore, was right, and Jesus perfectly timed his entry when all of Israel would gather in Jerusalem. And they did. A huge crowd welcomed him, and they praised God in loud voices, singing, Hosanna, blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. This was a great moment of hope and expectation for them. Yet this cheering and hailing lasted only a few days, and soon the same crowd turned against Jesus. They presumed he was their earthly king, but, so, but soon they found out that he was not the king or the leader they expected, the one who would restore their nation to its former glory. Thus they condemned him and called him for his, for his crucifixion. All this sudden change, for they had the wrong idea about Jesus. That was the issue then, and unfortunately it is the same today. We now face a global crisis, the likes of which perhaps this world has not experienced before. At times like this we pray and we hope for immediate response and relief. And we also turn to God. A friend of mine just recently made a bold comment and said, and he said, now everyone is suddenly a believer. Everyone now is praying and seeking God. Now while some expect God to directly intervene and bring the relief they desperately need, Others also predict this is to be the end of the times, the parousia, or the second coming of Christ, when God will bring his judgment and will, will restore his rule on earth as it is in heaven. While both these are legitimate and normal responses, sadly, this is not the right idea about Jesus. You will ask them, what is the right idea about Jesus. What is the proper understanding of his mission? Let me tell you, it has nothing to do with either the kind of godly intervention we expect or soon, or how soon will the parousia occur. Instead, it should be based on our reaction to tragedies and in particular the current global pandemic. While we follow and we should follow official guidelines, while we exercise social distancing and make every effort to stay healthy, while we try to find a cure, we also need to reevaluate re our understanding of life and the purpose of our existence. And we need to change our behavior. We need to acknowledge that God is still on his throne and he is still has the whole world in his hands. We need to turn to him and place all trust in him. Also, rather than highlighting our numerous or endless expectations from him, we need to focus on what God is expecting from us, even so at times like this. While Israel was looking for a national hero who would liberate from them from foreign rule and restore their glory, God was expecting humble obedience from Israel. As we now pray and hope for the end of this cruel crisis, why not also ask God to reveal to us his purpose and prospect from each one of us? What does God expect from the faithful 
at times like this. Isaiah chapter 43 is a great passage of comfort in times like this. Let us together read verses 5 to 11 and also focus on verse 17 in particular where God defines this prospect for us. Isaiah writes, Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bring your children from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by name, by my name, who I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Lead, lead out those who have eyes but are blind, who have ears but are deaf. All the nations gather together and the peoples assemble. Which of their gods foretold this and proclaimed to us the former things? Let them bring in their witnesses who they were right so that others may hear and say it is true. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me no God was formed, nor will there be one after me. What a beautiful passage. And in verse 7, God reveals this one truth that he created us for his glory, and that is what God expects from each one of us. Our existence, dear friends, was planned and conceived by God to bring glory to him. That glory is achieved through us, through our faith and commitment to him, both in times of joy and in times of sorrow both when we are saved and when we are in danger, both when we are healthy or when we are suffering pain in our bodies, and both when we are prospering economically and when we are experiencing a recession. We need to give God glory always and in all circumstances, but even so at times when we face cruel pandemics. Likewise, we need to pray and appeal to God for mercy always, not only at time of difficulties, but even more when everything is perfect for us. In one word, we need to be believers always, not only at times of crisis. God is with us in all circumstances, and we need to be with him under all circumstances. That is the right idea about Jesus. That is why he came to the world, and that is why he entered Jerusalem on, on Sunday. God's glory, friends, is in our humility. That is what this crisis should lead us to. This is the lesson also of Palm Sunday and the Holy Week following. Remember, Jesus was king, but he humbled himself for our sake. He took on him all our burdens. He walked to Jerusalem even though he knew Jerusalem was ground zero for him. He walked to Jerusalem even though his disciples pleaded with him not to go, for they knew a spiritual virus was waiting for him. Still, he put his life on the line, and Jesus willingly walked to his death on the cross. And he gave his life for us. Today, we praise God for those, for Jesus, and also for those who put their lives in danger for us. But also think if we are willing to sacrifice our earthly lives for his greater, for a greater and a better life in eternity. That is what God expects from each one of us. Not only during crisis, but when we are through with it, and God willing, we will. Jesus, dear friends, chose death on the cross, and he died. But God raised him from the dead, and we will celebrate that God winning next Sunday. And Jesus, with his death and resurrection, gave glory to God, and he gave it on our behalf. 
it is high time that we humble ourselves and give him the glory he deserves. And if, yes, even at times like this. For when God is glorified, he will also glorify us as he glorified his son. This is the message of Palm Sunday. Blessing to all of you and blessed is the king that comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. Friends, before I end this service and we will be ending it with the Iron Man, uh, I thank you all for joining us this morning. I hope and pray that you will have a wonderful Palm Sunday celebration under circumstances and I hope you will be safe and healthy to join us next Sunday for our Easter celebration. God willing, we will have an enhanced service next Sunday with the participation of few others from the church, including music. God bless you all. And remember, you can, even though we do not have the offering plates, but you can still put your offerings in an envelope and keep it for when the proper time comes, we all join together at the church and can share it with the church. Let us all end together singing the high mare, and I will be playing a beautiful high mare uh, that was sang by Isabel by Rattalia. So let us all sing and then we will end with a short prayer. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord and the love of Christ and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And may God keep you safe and healthy. Yerima may the Jesus Christus is here for us to go to North Korea, Yeshu Potuin, Avotutuna, Polorida, Asmas Bahet, the Polora, Michel Kalvira Givu, Niasin, and Kamalevas. Amen. Thank you all, and God be with you. Hope to see you soon. Amen. <laughs>